In this video, I'm just going to do a quick tour of all the plants that are somehow greenhouse related. So either plants that were started in my greenhouse, that have uh, that are hardening off, have come out of my greenhouse, new plants that have gone in my greenhouse. I'm going to tour them all in this video. And that's because I'm not going to do my garden tour. I think I'm going to leave that till next Friday. And I think I'm going to premiere that so that we can watch it together. If you uh, want to, you can sort of like click the notification and then it will premiere it at a certain time on Friday. And I'll try and get it so that you can all watch it, UK and USA. I don't think I can squeeze in Australia because the time zone is just too different. But I'll try and make it maximise it. So if you if you want to watch it, you will be able to. And then, of course, I'll be there as well so that we can chat in the chat if you like. So I'm thinking of doing it that way. And I think I might do all my garden tours that way. So let me know what you think. But anyway, let's get back to this video. So as you can see, in fact, these vegetables here, these tomatoes, aubergines, etc., were not in started in the garden uh, greenhouse. They were started in the kitchen and the garage with a view to moving them to the greenhouse but then it's uh it was so warm i just put them outside uh the next lot are my dahlias and a couple of rogue zinnias which i accidentally planted thinking there were zinnia se uh dahlia seeds and they're going to be coming out of those cardboard boxes and i'm going to repurpose those cardboard boxes as um planters uh, i have here we have some these are the Achillea fruit bowl. Um, as many of you have been following my channel for a while know, I'm sort of low key thinking about doing cut flowers on the side as a little cottage garden industry and selling them maybe at local farmers markets. So I've had to think about planting slightly different flowers than you would obviously get in people's gardens or in the supermarkets and florists. That, that one there was obviously all layer. I've got Amy stocks and those were some columbine i grew from seed and i have uh, down here some scabious so we'll see how they all work out there's quite a lot obviously now here's an interesting thing i planted this uh, up in another video thinking they were um florists blue azuratum which i think this one is but all the other ones are poppies I started to think, don't they look like poppies? And I started to notice that I had some in the greenhouse and I thought, these look like poppies. And now I'm thinking they just are poppies. So I don't quite know what's happened there. These are Gadisha, uh, seashell pink, I think these are called. These have just absolutely come up brilliant. I've noticed some are being nibbled under here. So I possibly need to remove the mesh in the day so that the birds can get in here and pick away at the slugs and snails. And I have some Bepleurum. Those ones that look like little cosmos germinating are the Bepleurum and all the others I'm guessing are just weeds. So I'll just kind of smush in between the Bepleurum to get rid of these other um, unknown growths. <laughs> Anyway, pretty pleased with those if they all come uh, up and survive to maturity. That's going to be a lot of flowers. So I'm going to be really, really happy with that. And here's my first ranuncular. How about that? A beautiful colour as well. I've been a little bit concerned about my ranunculus this year because it's my third or fourth year I've planted them in that patch. So I have been feeding them because they'd yet the leaves did start to come up a bit yellow. Anyway, they're not greenhouse related. So we'll talk about those in another video. Actually, they are a little bit. I'll show you in a minute that more dahlias here. And these are my Persicaria orientalis. Now, I accidentally sowed two types of Persicaria. Persicaria cerise pearls, which are shorter, and Persicaria orientalis, which are taller. And I actually specifically really wanted the taller ones, but I did like the short ones as well. And I don't know which ones are which. So that's just great. <laughs> uh, some gladioli there um, starting. I'm just sort of pre-growing them before I decide where in the borders they're going to fit. Uh, these are some straw flower in the box here. They did not like being hardened off. They were really quite sulky. And I was a little bit worried. It was a bit touch and go for a while, a couple of days but they're actually doing fine. These are silvery rose, so they're going to be a really pretty colour. And some more, oh, these are the, yeah, these Persicaria were getting 
eaten, so I'm going to move these. This is Achillea Love Parade, another one I've grown specifically because it's different to the bog standard Achillea. The flower heads are made up of little pretty flowers uh, in sort of a, a really nice colour, uh, not your bog standard sort of white Achillea. That's a Kiwi Jenny, another one that did not like going outside, even though it's fully hardy. It had just been, I had just cosseted it for a little while. They're my dahlia cuttings, those ones. These are the sunflowers I did in my previous video. If you want to see my previous video on sunflowers, I'll link that below. And I have some Mirabilis Angels trumpets uh, here in these ones, which I planted. If you're wondering why I planted them in the bottles, then obviously see my sunflower video. But essentially, it's just because obviously they're tall plants. They had long roots. So I thought they might be better suited in uh, longer tubs. So these are, these are my Rudabeckia. Don't they look fantastic? They are really liking it there. Uh, so this is my ranuncular greenhouse related. I did grow some ranunculars in the greenhouse. And these actually are a little bit, not a, not a great deal further ahead, but a little bit further ahead than the ones outside. The only thing is here, they're actually, now the tree is in leaf. They're actually probably in too much shade. And the reason they just look a bit flopped over there is because I have just watered them. But these were uh, an experiment, these snapdragons in here. They've been overwintered in here and I wanted to see how long I could get the stems for cut flower purposes. And they are huge. I mean, they must be, I mean, they must be five, four foot tall, at least, if not more. Uh, they are huge and they have lots of branching stems. So there's going to be lots of repeat flowering. The only thing with this system is, yes, it's fine if you want long stems, but I really would have liked them to have been flowered and out of here by now. So I am thinking of transplanting them. There's a couple of um, hanging baskets that I want to do a hanging basket with. These are my own oregano seeds. So easy, just threw them in a pot and they all came up. Some more salad. I've got lots of successions of salad, particularly come, cut and come again salad. And if you like these foil tray planters, I have a video on that as well, which I will also link in the description. And they're really sturdy and they look how nicely they all fit together, leaving no gaps on my shelf. Oh, and those are my sunflowers that I sowed in my sunflower video. And that was like literally only a day ago, which is why they haven't come up yet. What else? So lots of salad, lots of sunflowers. These are my Bells of Ireland and these are my Delphinium cuttings. So they are doing well. The initial leaf that I used uh, is yellow, but they've got this new, they have this new growth down here. So they, all my cuttings have actually done really well. I'll link that video if you want to see my Delphinium Delphinium cuttings, more Bells of Ireland. I bought some of my Carthamus, which is my saffron thistle inside because it was just being so eaten by slugs um so I, I did want to save a few because it is my first time growing them and I did want to collect the seeds so I bought some inside just to make sure that they do develop seed heads that I can harvest for next year these are some small tomatoes here these are chrysanthemum snowball and they're doing really well they're still quite small but they are actually quite healthy so I'm pretty, you know, excited to see how these little cuties flower. I'm very happy with those. I think they're going to be really sweet. Yeah, chrysanthemum snowball there. Little white sort of ball flowers are in little balls. And these are my flocks. They were really spotty. Uh, I don't think it was warm enough. That's the trouble. So on the left is the creme brulee. And on the right is Blushing Bride is the front. And then at the back, so these are the creme brulee, sorry, these two here. And then the back is Flocks of Sheep, which are the only ones that have really done quite well. So, but they're, they're a really pretty colour. So actually they will do. I'll just plant those next time. I've left a daily in here because I wanted to take another cutting, but I, I don't know whether I'm running out of time, to be honest. Here's all my fertiliser. Let me link that video below. I'm addicted to making organic fertilisers now for my plants and I'm doing they're doing a great job I also have a stinky bucket uh, down of compost tea as well that was some chard I was pointing out there these are ageratum timeless mix I'm kind of in the middle of planting these out so some are outside some are potted on that need to go outside 
and that sort of little bush is all the ones left over that I still need to pot on. So, and to be honest, the ones outside are doing better. They preferred being outside. This is Gypsophilia kermesina, which is a pink version of the Gypsophilia Covent Garden. Slightly more elegant flowers. These are some pink snapdragons that did germinate, but in fact got eaten by a rogue slug. Uh, this is my uh, outdoor wildflower meadow mix, which is for my living roof on the above the uh, log store on my drive which i just haven't had time to do yet but i am fully intending to do so uh, please be patient and stick with me i am definitely doing that at some point this summer i really want that living roof done and i have another one for shade which i'm going to put over my chicken coop these are some more tomatoes cherry tomatoes they did not like being uh, brought outside but they seem to be OK. So I think they're going to be fine. They're just sort of sulking for a few days. These are all the zinnias I planted in another video, which I'll link below. So there's a few videos you can watch that are related to this so that you can see fully how all this has evolved. And yeah, these are a huge variety of zinnias. I won't go through them, but some have been a bit spotty. Um, I think it was, what's this one? The um, Envy and uh, Green... Envy, no, that is green lime. Or is this one the green lime? I can't remember. Anyway, I'll show you. Look there. Oh, giant lime. Yes, but the other ones are sort of coming through bit by bit there. So I think they'll get there in the end. I did, in fact, put these on the heated seed bed because when I sowed them, we had a cold night and zinnias specifically like it to be around 15. Uh, so and I thought with, the, with them being in foil trays, they might get a little bit cold. So I put them on my heated seed bed. Oh my goodness, I just thought I'll link that video below as well. My DIY heated seed bed. Uh, I made it so it's anyone can do it because I am not uh, handy like that really. This is my Cosmos, Cosmos Daydream, Cosmos Dutch Rose, Cosmos Double Click Pink, I think this one is. And then I've got some more which I planted a couple of days, a few days later, so they haven't germinated yet. And I think one of those is apricot lemonade and an antique kind of vibe. And then these are my watermelons. I just hope I can get these to fruit because, you know, they do need a long season to fruit. And well, with our climate, and it's anyone's guess whether they'll they'll get the, the, the conditions that they need. This is, I've ha harvested from this salad three times. I demonstrated that in another video. My courgettes died, so I'm going to have to re-sow those. But that's pretty much it. I think that's, I mean, there's a lot going on. And, you know, there's equally as much going on in the garden. But as I said, I'm going to wait for the alliums to come out to do that, um, the garden tour. Because I really, that's, sorry, that's some more salad I did. I just wanted to show you um, them at different stages for the succession uh, so that I can harvest, you know, one after the other. But yeah, the garden tour, I'm thinking of posting that next Friday. Um, I'll, I'll let you know in the community notes what time and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.